How you going? In this short video, I want to talk about voltage drop. Um, we have one rule in the wiring rule book of AS3000, um, 3.62, which talks about the 5% rule or maximum value of 5%. Um, and then all the other stuff that I'll be talking about will be in the 3008 book. 3008 book gives us our VC values or their tables for calculating voltage drop. I'm going to talk about the temperature rating table too, how that takes into play for the um, when a question set up for us and also talk about how you, the scenarios of how voltage drop works. So the first thing is 3.62 says it's not allowed to exceed 5%. Now 5% rule can apply to a new property or it can also apply to an existing property. So for example if I was buying a house and going to put in a new set of mains and stuff like that then the distance from the street to the house for underground mains or whatever would then look at voltage drop and then that point there wouldn't be more than five percent but on the same time if i decided then to put a shed which was a sub main down to a big shed at the back decided to build that a little bit later the five percent then moves from the house down to the shed basically it's the furthest point um, into the installation where the voltage drop cannot exceed 5%. So from the house, when we did the mains, then we, if we had the sub mains, then it becomes 5%. Uh, and then if I went from the, the shed out to a pump or something, and it could be the overall run was uh, 300 meters, the cable you could find as it goes from the mains to the sub mains to the final sub circuit could get larger. And the reason the cable could be getting larger is to overcome the overall resistance gathered up along each cable. And we need to make a larger cable, so we drop the resistance of the cable per meter to overcome that 5%. So 5%, we look at 400 volts as a supply voltage for a commercial property or something that has three phase would be around 20 volts. That's 400 times 0 0.05, brings that to 20 volts. Single phase is... 230 times it's 0 0.05 comes to 11.5 volts. So the 5% rule, um, as I said to you, the minimum we can have is that 400 volts less than 20 volts, 230 less the 11.5 volts. Once we go below that value, we either have to increase the size of the cable to overcome that resistance. Now, when you're looking at voltage drop, D ratings do not take into effect. So if I have it protected by HRC fuse, depth of laying, cables touching, cables running in parallel, right? The only thing it will do is if you look at the question, if you do have two cables running in parallel, and say, for example, you've gone, um, you know, the, the maximum demand for the whole installation was 60 amps, I would divide by two cables and have that as 30 amps per cable. So you've got to be very careful when you're looking at certain things because when you're running cables in parallel, the current needs to be split between the two conductors. Very simple thing and it's overlooked sometimes. Then all right, so D ratings don't take into effect with soil receptivity, how, um, like I said to you, but the type of cable we use sometimes is also important. All right, because on the, each cable, we have what we call a cable rating. So if I had V90, it's uh, 75 degrees. Where am I going to find that? Well, if we go to a book called uh, the AS3008, uh, we also have our tables in there which talk about our VC values for when we're working out and also our formulas in there. So I'm going to probably refer a little bit about that book now and talk about what it does. So page 14 covers the uh, temperature ratings of all the cables. Normally we look in the first column for normal use. So if I have a question and it says HLL, HLIT 90 or, you know, something 110, they only worked on three values, 75 degrees, 90 degrees, all right, and 110. When we look at the tables in the front of the book for the guide, normally when we're doing cable selection, they're based on those three values. But when we look at the VC values, it can go down to 40 degrees, 60 degrees, 75, 90 110 because certain questions in voltage drop 
is the cable might be limited temperature to 40 degrees or 60 degrees and that could be on a sub circuit so you need to be wary of that they don't just come in the three values the cable could have a rating of 90 degrees but it could be then a little bit of para, a little bit of information the question says no it's limited to um, 40 or, 50 or 60 degrees okay so you need to look at that probably have a look at that in some of the books that are um, questions I'm going to put forward in the booklet anyway <coughs> pardon me um, so let's open up the book at the very back of the book there's a um, section called table b1 now b1 is a thing so the book we're looking for is this little baby here called cable selection okay um, 3000 uh, 2017 is what we need not 2009 we need the current updated version and if we go to the very back of the book and open up table b1 b1 is like the index but at the back of the book what's good about the index on b1 is it tells you where all of, what, what tables are and what page and what they do okay so the ones that we're going to be dealing with is page uh, table one page 14 limiting temperature rating so if i'm looking at something i'm not sure what the rating of the cable is always keep that in mind that's on table one the next one we're going to be looking at is tables 40 41 42 43 44 and 45 okay so table 40 if we have a look at that starts off with three phase cables tied in um, a trefoil now trefoil means tidy in a triangular shape cable tied to three in a triangular shape on a cable tray a lot of people think trefoil is something like a coating on a cable or something like that it's not true what we do is we tie it in a triangular shape all three phases tied in it's meant to help cancel the magnetic field between the three cables as it's rotating through its 120 degrees magnetic field all right table 40 now that's in copper table 41 talks about single cables and also cables inside an enclosure so underground enclosure underground conduit uh, cable tray box together single conductors all right sdis and all that stuff that's what table 41 is that's also for copper okay got to be wary the first three tables i talk about are over copper 40 41 42 43 44 45 aluminium big difference in when we talk about these cables okay table 42 is for multi-core orange circular any type but not a flex all right a orange circular cable or tps but something that has multi-cores tied inside so that could be three cores and earth right they do talk about in the cables here four core and earth but you've got to take into the thing into consideration the neutral is not considered inside this book it doesn't carry the full load current red white blue do active and neutral do carry a full load current so the neutral is not considered to be one of the main conductors that carry current in a three-phase circuit all right it'll either say three core or two core all right or two single cores three single cores it doesn't talk about the fourth core which is a neutral okay the earth is always added on extra as well because that is only current carrying current under fault conditions so table 42 as we said multi-core table 43 single phase cables tied in trefoil again aluminium conductors the thing i want you to take note of though in table 43 uh, 44 and 45 the conductor sizes don't start until you get to 16 mil why because they don't make anything under 16 mil in aluminium conductors there's a big difference in current carrying capacity too between copper and aluminium copper carries 30 percent less current than copper does so you'll find a cable that might be rated larger for aluminium right in copper it'll be a smaller size cable but both carry the same amount of current so you could have something that's 95 mil in aluminium copper and say 120 or 150 mil squared in aluminium okay two different type of conductors two different ways they carry current all right so we've got 44 same thing tidy um, flat touching or laid inside a common um, wiring enclosure and the last one multi-core again so like i said 40 41 42 copper 
43, 44, 45, aluminium. All of the values on these tables are three phase. Okay, they're not a set of tables for single phase and a table set for three phase. All right? If we go to one of the tables, right, so I'm going to turn to table 40 now. All right, so in the back of your book, it's always a good thing to mark on B1. Get a highlighter and highlight the first three in orange and the next three in green or something. So when you look in the back, you know what those are. Color the corner of the tabs as well. Because look, when you're using this book, there's only going to be about 10 or 15 main tables you're going to use. So highlight them in the back. Highlight the corner of the page rather than put a tab in. And you know straight away, when you look at that color, what it stands for. All right. So let's go to table 40. Okay. And if we get to that table, we find that... Where are we? Just getting there now. Table 40, back this way. So there's little footnotes down the bottom as well. But on page 81, which goes back a bit further too, that's the other page I wanted to mention as well. Page 91, 92. It's a section, start of section 4. It talks about voltage drop. You don't need to remember the formulas because they're on these two pages, on this page. VC, 1,000 times VD divided by L times I. Now, the two ways these formulas are, and the second one is v, voltage drop equals the length times the current times VC, which is a VC value we require from the cable size and off the table, divided by 1,000. The difference between these two um, formulas is when we have VC, right, in a question, if it doesn't have a cable size in the question, we have to use VC. If it talks about a cable size of any description, 4 mil, 10 mil, 6 mil, whatever you want, all right, you use the VD. So VD times length times I, and the VC would be the size of the cable in the question, say 6 mil. Now it depends if it's a multi core or single core, whatever, we go to that table we would then look up, but we need to be wary of the temperature size too. Okay, so the formulas are in the book. All right, you know, you've got the difference between the two. I'm going to explain a little bit more and go through some questions a little bit later. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do one question with the VC question and then do another one with the voltage drop and kind of walk through a question. All right, and just keep it simple. Down the bottom, there's two little notes, footnotes that you do need to highlight, right? Now, it says here, to, um, to, to convert a single phase value voltage drop, right, millivolts per amp meter, right, values to a three phase um, value, you must multiply the single phase value by 0 0.08, sorry, 0 0.866. And if you want to convert a three phase value to a single phase value, all right, um, you need to times it by 1.155, okay? Now, what I'm saying is this is like us using um, root 3, 1.732. So the, the idea of that is so that you can work the values in the tables from the three-phase value va values that are given to you, you can apply them to a single-phase value as well, all right? So you might have a single-phase installation, how do I do it? You look up the value, you go through it, and you either times it or you divide it by those values. All right? Um, we'll get back to those. Now, the other question is, I find that when you get to the tables, all right, some of the kids also forget it's really important to put down the unit values when you're doing your questions. Voltage or VD and also millivolts milli per amp meter. All right, it's fairly important. So when we get to the tables, right, we get to the tables here, we have a look down the bottom here. It's got those written in the footnotes and stuff like that. Um, there's two sections. There's one called max and one called 0 0.8 power factor. We don't really need to worry about the 0 0.8 power factor. We're always looking at maximum value. Always look down that line. Um, I always find when I'm writing out the question, I'll go table 41 at 75 degrees because I, I find when people are starting to get down to column numbers like four and five, column four is a maximum value, column five might be the point, 0 0.8. So 
to cover your arse and just write it down, just put down the temperature size, okay? At what time, what, size, what temperature column you're looking at. Makes life easy, all right? Now the next thing um, we need to do is, I'm gonna leave the video now for a sec, and I'm gonna come back and have a couple little drawings I'm gonna show you. Probably not too flash off the computer screen, but this is me, I'm making cheap and easy, nasty videos, but simple to follow. So the next one I'm going to show you is some little questions, um, worked examples out of the Jenison book, uh, sorry, the, um, the electrical books that we kind of look at, but they've got some good drawings in there, easy for us to show and follow. I'm going to show you something, for example, a single phase, one where we don't have the size of the cable, and the next one where we have the size of the cables, and how the voltage drops work down the line, all right? Because it is important, if your voltage at the furthest point and you could have a property down the back there with a big shed and a car hoist, and you're only running instead of 230 volts, and you've got 202, well, your hoist motor or whatever motor you're going to try to run, or compressor, or arc weld, or everything, that's going to go up in a puff of smoke, because it's running not at the correct voltage, all right? And it's going to work harder. Okay, I'll leave it now, and I'll get back to you soon with the other questions.